I think we'll begin this morning. Um, welcome to uh, the webinar that's uh, going to uh, talk about the agricultural net income situation for property tax calculations. This is some work done by uh, Leah Sudel and myself. Um, my name is uh, Alan Featherstone and I'm head of the uh, um, Department of, of Agricultural Economics. In terms of looking at uh, what uh, we're, we're looking at, um, we're going to talk a little bit in terms of uh, looking at the uh, expected returns to land, especially uh, land rent and uh, property tax appraisals. Um, next, we'll uh, talk about uh, the calculation of the uh, landlord net income for property tax considerations. Um, we'll talk about the uh, current situation. And then we'll spend some time um, looking at uh, how long before property tax appraisals begin to uh, decrease. And then uh, finally, we will uh, cover alternative formula changes. There have been uh, um, a proposal that uh, was filed. It, it didn't really go anywhere in this last session, but uh, um, one of the things that uh, we've done a little bit is to do some preliminary um, analysis to see how that may end up uh, changing the formula. And so um, certainly um, that's uh, what we're um, looking for. And in, in some respects, um, the uh, paradox between uh, um, the uh, cash rents, the uh, um, um, returns from, from farming, um, and uh, the landlord net income um, are, are there. And in some respects, especially with the uh, recent decline in uh, net farm income, in the uh, sector with regards to the profitability from the uh, cropping sector declining, um, it was uh, pretty difficult for a lot of producers to uh, end up uh, um, seeing their returns go down, but their uh, property tax appraisals um, ending up uh, continuing to, to increase. Um, what I've displayed here is uh, simply the uh, um, estimated cash rent um, for uh, Barton County, Kansas. And I'm gonna use Barton County um, in that it is in the center of the state. In, in some respects, um, um, the situation is not gonna be a lot different um, from what's been uh, um, going on in Barton County. Um, but uh, um, given some of the alternative uh, calculations we'll be, be doing, those are rather intense. And so um, we're just going to, uh, to focus on a couple counties um, and uh, that will hopefully give you an idea of uh, what is going on statewide. But uh, again, if you look at the estimated cash rent, the ability to pay cash rent out of earnings that uh, Michael Taylor um, uh, calculates each year. Um, she did a webinar previously, essentially in Barton County. In 2013, that was $60. 2014, it was 72. Then 15, 48, 34, 17. And then it uh, recovered in 18 and 19 to 34 and 40 dollars. If you look at the uh, um, landlord net income for property tax appraisals, you saw a different picture in terms of uh, in 2013, it was 29.50, um, then 33. And then it continued to increase to uh, um, the uh, um, estimates that just come out came out for uh, 2019. Um, the average for Barton County will be uh, 46.55. I think the other thing that's important to realize is when I talk about these numbers, these are averages, and uh, certainly um, um, if you're in Barton County or wherever you are, it's important to realize that uh, numbers can be higher or lower, and uh, these are just the, the averages. But certainly there you see a very different picture, and, and certainly this is part of the frustration, I think, that uh, um, land, agricultural landowners um, end up seeing is the, uh, the fact that uh, um, rental um, rates, the ability to pay um, rent um, decrease, but yet the uh, landlord net income from a property tax um, continued to increase. And um, one of the things you'll end up seeing is for 2016, 17, 18, and 19, the landlord net income um, was more um, than the estimated cash rental rate um, in, uh, in Barton County. And, and again, um, that does create some sensitivity. Um, it's important to realize that uh, um, the uh, landlord net income is determined by statute in Kansas law. 
and this is defined as the eight-year average of the eight-year average of retur the return to the landlord. Um, and so essentially there's a process um, for non-irrigated land where um, on a county by county basis, um, there is the uh, revenue from each crop calculated by um, price times yield minus the expenses. Um, the uh, income is just the uh, market-based income where um, it's price times yield, um, government payments, crop insurance proceeds, um, trading profit um, from uh, futures contracts, all of those would uh, be excluded from the, uh, the calculation. And then there's typical expenses that are uh, subtracted out. Then um, in, in terms of um, the uh, calculation then is averaged over eight years, and it's an eight-year average of an eight-year average to essentially smooth some of the variability in, in yield. This uh, landlord net income then is uh, um, given to uh, the uh, property valuation division. They capitalize this um, at the statute defined capitalization rate, which is uh, between 11 and 12 percent, and this is based on a five-year average of uh, farm credit interest rates. The important thing to realize is that the process places a weight on the middle years of the process. And so the 2019 landlord net income, which is just um, basically uh, came out in March with regards to the evaluations, uses the entire period of information from 2003 to 2017. And um, the midpoint there is going to uh, get the, uh, the most weight. And so um, the midpoint right now is uh, 2010. And so that is going to be um, the heaviest weight with regards to this. Um, it's designed to have more of a smoothing effect on tax values. Um, certainly there's a goal of to remove the variability of year-to-year -year, um, changes. Um, it doesn't work well from a um, budgeting perspective to have land values going up one year, dropping the next year. It certainly um, places um, 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 stress on school boards and other local entities that rely on the property tax. And so um, the legislature um, um, or property tax theory certainly would suggest that there um, is some type of smoothing type process. To maybe illustrate a little bit with regards to uh, how the values are calculated, we uh, uh, end up using um, values um, uh, from 2003 to 2017. And essentially the weight on 2003 and 2017 is about 1.8%. And that gets all the way up to um, a little over 12% in 2010. And so um, this kind of gives you the uh, weighting matrix there um, to give you a little bit of a picture in terms of how this thing um, is weighted as um, the 2019 values are calculated. This next graph here basically just shows what the uh, um, returns are um, just by taking price times yield minus the expenses um, and then weighting it by the crop mix for crops produced in that county. And so certainly um, you can end up seeing that uh, that was fluctuating from 1998 through 2006 um, between 30 and $20. It did um, get a little higher in 2006. 2007 was about 30, then that jumped up into uh, um, the mid-60s, and then it had fallen off to about 40 in 2012. It jumped up again in 2013 to about 64, um, and then it uh, incre or decreased on a regular basis um, all the way through 2017. Um, for Barton County, um, in, and in some respects, I think this illustrates some of the stress that's going on in the production agriculture sector. The uh, landlord net income um, from a property tax perspective in 2017 um, was the lowest um, um, in the time period here. And, and so it essentially ranged from $15, $15.50, which it was in 2017, um, to about $65, $66. And so um, certainly if you would just view this on a one year or set your property taxes on a one year basis, you could see the tremendous variability um, that you would uh, experience um, all the way from 
um, a capitalizing a $15 return to capitalizing a 65. And so um, being able to uh, do just a single year um, would place an incredible amount of uh, um, volatility with regards to uh, the, uh, the property tax uh, um, situation. To give you a little bit of an indication as we begin to uh, move forward, um, we end up uh, seeing this uh, process. Um, for example, the uh, 2014 calculations, um, you ended up seeing that some of that high return there um, was getting some weight, but not a lot of weight. And then when we put in 2015, that thing moves a little bit further. And so we're giving more weight to high income years, less weight to uh, some of the prior years. Um, we continue to move forward into 2016. Um, you can see that uh, the uh, peak income in uh, 2008 isn't quite there. Um, essentially in the uh, um, weight for the 2017, um, that high peak had the most, uh, most weight. Um, however, you can begin to see that the second peak in income there begins to uh, take more weight. Again, we move forward, and, it, and again, you can just essentially see how those high income years are beginning to uh, um, um, get less weight as we, as we go on. And if we look at uh, where we are in uh, 2019, um, essentially we're almost in the middle of, uh, of those, those two peaks. And so, um, in some respects, just by looking at this, um, you could begin to anticipate that we may end up uh, seeing a turn in that landlord net income as some of those high income years um, to get, begin to get, uh, get uh, less weight as, uh, as we move forward. And so that hopefully gives a little bit of a picture with regards to how um, this system is set up and how uh, the uh, property tax uh, formulation ends up looking at. And so from a Barton County perspective, uh, essentially in 2013, the average landlord net income that was capitalized to determine property taxes in, in Barton County was $29.50. Um, that increased up to uh, 46.55 in 2019. And if you look at this, you can see that uh, early on from 2013, it was a 10% change, an 11% change, a 10% change. And then uh, if you begin to look at this in 16, 17, and 18, um, the percentages began to decrease. And from 2018 to 2019, essentially there was a 1.3% um, increase. Um, the next slide that I want to talk show you a little bit is just to give you an indication of what's going on um, statewide. Certainly, um, we are focusing on Barton County. Um, but uh, what I ended up doing is choosing a county from each of the other um, crop reporting districts just to give you um, what that average landlord net income is. And uh, one of the things you can end up seeing here for um, the uh, non-irrigated land, um, each of the um, increased counties um, had an increase during this year. Um, Barton had uh, about a 6% uh, or for last year had a 6%, Sumner 5%, Marshall about 15, um, Anderson 6, Butler 10, Jewel 13, Ford 11, Greeley um, 6, and Thomas 14. If you look at the numbers from 18 to 19, you see much smaller increases, 1.3% for Barton, 0.2% for Sumner, um, about 10% for Marshall, 2% for Anderson, 4% from Butler, 7% uh, from Jewel, 6% from Ford, 0.4% um, from Greeley, and uh, Thomas, 8.2%. And so you can kind of begin to see that that percentage increase is actually decreasing um, as um, um, time goes on. If we would go back and look at 16 to 17, um, we would end up seeing the, uh, the, the same picture where the rate of increase is, uh, is decreasing. If you look at irrigated land, um, or excuse me, this is pasture land, and so we'll cover irrigated land uh, next, but pasture land, um, in, in some respects, generally you can, um, the, uh, you can see some trends there. Um, in certain counties, for example, in the western part of the state, 
um, you actually have seen a decrease from uh, 1718 to 1819. Um, north central a decrease, central an increase in the rate, south central, um, northeast, east central, and uh, um, an increase in, in southeast. It, some of these numbers are much smaller. The way that uh, these uh, um, landlord net incomes are determined is they're determined off um, the uh, um, cash rent um, for um, those individual crop reporting districts. And then they'll subtract off uh, costs that are typically paid by the landlord. And so um, those costs would be fencing, um, water um, type uh, um, provision if, uh, if that's needed. Um, with regards to that. And, and so the pasture land is, is done a little bit differently than the uh, um, crop land. And uh, the, the big difference is just the uh, um, use of a cash rent basis and then subtracting the typical costs um, from, from those properties. Um, if we look at non, or the irrigated land, essentially, um, I have different wells for northwest, west central, and southwest. I'm using 300 foot wells. These are calculated for different well depths um, um, within the irrigation districts. Um, north central, central, and south central are all using 100 foot wells. Um, again, you can see the same general pattern is going on with regards to uh, non irrigated cropland that the increases in 17 and 18 were um, generally much higher than those in 18 and 19. And again, it's that high income um, in uh, those two years that uh, are essentially um, uh, moving their way um, through the formula. And in some respects, um, we've actually seen from 2019 or 2018 to 2019 that uh, we did see some slight fall with regards to the landlord net income. And so, for example, in the Southwest, Clark, Grant, Hamilton, Morton, and Stevens, the average landlord net income decreased um, from the property tax year 18 to the property tax 19. Um, East Central, you had Chase, Coffee, Line, and Morse, where we saw a slight decrease um, from um, 18 to 19. Um, Southeast Greenwood, Wood, and then uh, South Central, Kiowa, Pawnee, Reno, Sedgwick, Stafford, Barber, Comanche, Harper, and Kingman. And so, um, again, we're beginning to see where the uh, um, landlord net income has begun to peak and um, will begin to fall. On irrigated land, essentially uh, for a 700-foot well in West Central, um, that uh, landlord net, net income dropped, and then for the southwest, 500, 600, and 700 foot wells, um, that landlord net income um, dropped on average for um, that, that district. And, and, and so um, with irrigated land, those uh, um, properties that have uh, deeper wells um, are starting to see um, a decline in the landlord net income that is going to be capitalized into, uh, into uh, their land values. This next slide here basically just looks at uh, Barton County and trying to get at the idea of when non-irrigated returns might begin to fall. Um, and what I've done here is essentially the lowest landlord net income occurred um, in 2017 using the, the returns from 2017 and one of the things that makes up the 2019 property taxes, and so all of those start from uh, the level of 2019 LNI, then we began to uh, um, do some scenario analysis. And what I ended up doing is I ended up assuming, let's say that uh, um, the uh, LNI for uh, the uh, 2018, 19, 20 um, remains at 1554 going forward. That gives you the purple line. And you can see that uh, in 2020 in Barton County, the expectations is, are that uh, um, we will begin to see a decline in the landlord net um, um, income. And then uh, um, you can look at that. Again, hopefully we don't uh, experience um, 1554. Um, simply that would be um, at the minimum over this last 20-year uh, period and remaining at, at that level. 
Um, if you get up to the 40, 54, that would be back to um, about where the average is. The average for Barton County is between the 35, 50 and the 40, 50. And so essentially the yellow and blue line would say, okay, let's, if we get back up to the average, what may we see with regards to the, uh, the land, landlord net, net income? Um, one of the things to look at here in any of these assumptions from 1554 all the way up to 4054, um, the uh, 2020 um, landlord net income will be less than the 2019 landlord net income. And uh, essentially um, out there for several years, there should begin to be a decline in that landlord net income as we, uh, we move forward. Um, one of the things that I also looked at was just uh, trying to get an indication for sure where we may end up in 2018. What I ended up doing is I took the Kansas net farm income from uh, the uh, Kansas Farm Management Association. I subtracted out the government program payments and then I essentially subtracted out the net crop insurance proceeds. Again, government payments and the uh, net crop insurance proceeds um, are not computed. Um, when we calculate the uh, landlord net incomes in the state of Kansas. And so looking at that, you can end up looking at a state value and uh, essentially the uh, landlord net income on a state value was about 30,000 once you uh, remove the government payments and the net insurance proceeds. Um, on average, that increased to a little bit over 40 in 2017. The numbers in green would be those that would, and, and again, Kansas Farm Management records are not used in this computation, but uh, essentially the uh, USDA NAS information is, but uh, um, certainly there would be a correlation with regards to uh, um, what those prices and yields that NAS reports with regards to the profitability of farming within the Kansas Farm Management Association. Um, but if you look at this, the best estimate for 2018 in those landlord net incomes that will make up the 2020 um, assessment of agricultural land values is on a state value. It's going to be fairly flat with regards to uh, the profitability of uh, um, uh, farming without uh, government payments and crop insurance proceeds. Um, in the Northwest, that probably will back off a little bit. The North Central, it'll um, probably increase a little bit from 17 to 18. Um, the Northeast, it'll decrease from 17 to 18. Southwest will probably increase a little bit. Um, South Central will increase. The Southeast will, will decrease. And so overall, in, in some respects, I think we're probably going to be pretty close um, to landlord net incomes on an individual year in 2018 as we were in 2017. To go back to the example, to give you a little bit of a picture in terms of what's uh, going on, in Barton County, the 15-year average of the landlord net income is 38.37. The 15-year minimum is 15.54, which did occur in uh, the 2017 crop year. Assuming that we have equal returns in the future, basically the turning point um, under any of the scenarios that I ran was 2020. And so essentially, if um, the landlord net income ended up being 40-50, um, land the landlord net income would fall by 0.2%. Um, if it remains fairly low, um, it uh, would fall by 1.1% from 2019 to 2020. And so, um, basically, what this indicates is we are to this turning point in 2020. Um, I've done this uh, property tax uh, seminar on and off for a few years, and uh, um, we previously were not close to the turning point, but uh, we are to uh, the turning point where that is going to uh, look at. Again, if you end up uh, forecasting out 5%, and if we remain at 1550, a uh, very low profitability in agriculture, um, by 2024, 20, um, we could see um, land values fall by about 25%. Um, in terms of if we uh, um, 
would return more to the average, we would still see probably between um, a 12 and 14% um, um, decline in, in land values. And so um, from a property tax pr perspective, we um, um, based on um, 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 a situation where we don't return to um, um, high profitability, which hopefully we will get that high profitability, but uh, unless we get well above average, um, we could see um, some pretty significant declines in that uh, um, landlord net income um, over the uh, the next next five five years um, as we as we move forward. The last thing I want to talk about, and then hopefully we'll have time for some discussion and questions. Um, in uh, the last legislative session. Um, the House Bill 2293 was introduced, and if you want to see it, um, essentially I have the uh, um, link to the bill. Um, in black, the black uh, italicized um, was basically how the uh, law was changed. Um, previously, the law says commodity prices, crop yields, and pasture, and um, rangeland rental rates and expenses shall be based on an average of the eight calendar years immediately preceding the calendar year, which immediately precedes the year evaluation. Um, the revised text basically says prior to July 1, 2020, and then it, it basically on and after July 1, 2020, commodity prices, crop yields, pasture and rent, Rangeland rental rates and expenses shall be based on an average of the calendar year immediately preceding the calendar year that immediately precedes the year evaluation. And so what that ends up doing is it takes out the eight year um, average of the eight year average is my understanding, or at least that's the analysis that we ended up doing, although um, it isn't exactly clear um, with regards to whether or not it's just going to be the annual rental rate from the previous year. And if that was the case, we would have a situation where um, four years or five years ago in Barton County, um, the uh, landlord net income would be $64 or $65 um, per acre, and then it would uh, immediately drop um, through 2018 to 1554. And so certainly, um, um, if, if that was the case, um, the thought that at least we were Analysis analyzing was uh, um, we ended up looking at three scenarios. It's also important that the uh, productive productivity index on soils um, also was adjusted to eliminate eight-year average. And so, anytime a change was made, that would be fully integrated um, in the year that it made. And so, using Barton, Dickinson, and Rush County as a guide, um, we're going to evaluate three scenarios. One is basically just uh, eliminating the eight-year average of the eight-year average, and so essentially we're gonna take eight-year averages of single years for price, productivity, crop mix, and yield. That's going to be scenario one. Um, scenario two is basically going to use the eight-year averages of single years for price, and so instead of having an eight-year average of an eight-year average of price, we're just gonna have a single year for price averaged over eight years, and then we'll still use the eight-year average of the eight-year average of yields, crop mix, and productivity. And then scenario three would be just shortening up that average from five years average to five-year averages. And so essentially what we ended up doing is counterfactually looking at what would happen in uh, these uh, three counties, um, Barton, Dickinson, and, and Rush. And in terms of uh, looking at where we are, um, the current history is the solid line, and so Rush County is the green solid line, um, Barton County is the red um, solid line, and Dickinson County is the uh, purple s uh, solid line. And then we can end up uh, seeing um, with regards to if we just have that eight-year average, um, um, those are the dotted lines. Again, the purple um, is uh, Dickinson, the red is Barton, and the um, um, rush green line, dash line, is uh, Rush County. Um, one of the things you can see is there are places where um, there are some kinks in this. Um, 
it, it does um, increase, uh, would have increased a little bit more aggressively in terms of uh, um, in 2009, uh, especially in uh, um, Dickinson and Barton County, less so in Rush County. Um, those lines were pretty close together. Um, essentially, you would have had a higher increase faster. Um, and then in 2017, there would have been a turning point, um, 2016 for Rush County, and uh, um, essentially um, um, looking at that um, in 2019, the uh, property tax burden um, with regards to the LNI um, would be less for each of the counties than it is currently. Um, however, um, there would have been years where there would have been more, more property tax um, ended up uh, um, being, being paid. And again, this is a political decision that uh, policymakers end up uh, making. Um, essentially, we're not advocating in the department for one mechanism or another. Um, we're just trying to uh, um, give you an indication of what those might look like. Um, again, this is where we just use a price, um, eight, single year price in the eight year average. And then we continue to use the eight-year average, the yields, productivity, crop mix. And uh, one of the things you'll end up seeing is these, the lines here are less kinky um, than um, they were on the previous scenario. There's much more smoothness um, in terms of when um, they, they, uh, they move. Um, and uh, if smoothness is a property that's desired, um, scenario two might be favored over scenario one. Um, with regards to this, you'll end up seeing that uh, um, with scenario one um, in 2019, we would be below the uh, um, current level of taxation. Um, um, whereas in scenario two, just adjusting the price, um, we still would, would, would not be um, below um, um, with where we are from a property tax scenario. And then uh, um, this is just looking at a five-year average of the five-year averages. And so essentially, um, this would be moving the eight-year average of the eight-year averages to a five-year average of the five-year averages. And again, you're going to have some smoothness. It would, um, in some respects, perhaps follow um, net farm income a little bit uh, more um, than the uh, um, current uh, property valuation uh, mechanism um, does. Um, but again, it, it just gives a picture. And then this last one essentially shows the difference um, between scenario one, scenario two, scenario three for Barton County, um, just to allow you to uh, kind of look at uh, each of those uh, um, scenarios with regards to uh, um, where, where they, they may end up being. And, and so you can see um, that, that some are a little bit more smoother than others. Um, some end up uh, turning down a little bit more quickly than others. Um, but uh, um, the, the key thing um, that uh, I think um, property tax um, computations are trying to do is to look at the underlying inherent um, productivity and profitability of the land. Um, and uh, um, again, there's various ways to define that. Um, and the uh, purple line, the solid line there, is currently how the state of Kansas um, defines that. Um, there are some uh, um, differences with regards to the blue, the red, and the, and the green. Um, each of those methods could be imp implemented. Um, and uh, in some respects, um, if uh, the uh, legislature was going to seriously begin considering these, um, would probably want to do these for um, more um, counties across the state. Um, Leah will vouch that it takes a lot of time to go back and uh, um, construct uh, the base information um, um, for a um, district basis and a different property type basis. And so um, we just use the central region um, to uh, um, um, maybe minimize the, uh, the computations, but uh, um, certainly these could be expanded both to irrigated and uh, in pasture land looking at different, uh, different mechanisms. And, and again, um, the key thing is this is a policy decision that the state of Kansas um, will um, um, make or choose not to make um, as they consider um, egg use land valuation. To uh, maybe summarize real quick, um, Kansas real estate uh, tax 
fixed values on non-irrigated land are likely to begin to decrease in the next year. And so uh, looking ahead, um, I think there's going to be a lot more on the non-irrigated than the 19 counties that see an actual decrease in the landlord net income. And so um, from a real estate appraisal perspective, I think we're to the point now where we're going to begin to see those uh, um, LNIs um, begin to decrease. Um, I think we're going to see the same type of thing on irrigated land. Certainly the profitability on non-irrigated and irrigated land, while it doesn't correspond 100%, there is a high correlation between those. And so you're likely to uh, um, begin to see decreases also on more irrigated land um, LNIs um, when uh, the calculations come out next year and the next two, three, four years um, following. On pasture, they're likely to be fairly stable. Um, I think you're going to end up seeing um, continued increase in those. Um, again, they do follow um, market cash rent as opposed to a productivity, and so they are a little less uh, variable um, with regards to that. Um, some of those uh, high percentage levels, if you go back and, and look at those, um, are from areas where the landlord net income has been uh, relatively Level, well, relatively small. In terms of more of a longer term, I think unless um, we see um, profitability to return to above average levels, um, we could see basically more than a 10% in decrease in those landlord net incomes um, over the, uh, the next five years. And so um, essentially we are to the point in that formula where um, those landlord net incomes, at least for the cropping ground, is likely going to it decrease over the next five years. And uh, essentially, by looking at where we are in 2024 compared to 2019, we could end up uh, seeing um, 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 decreases of uh, more, than, more than 10%. And so hopefully that will spur some questions. And when you're doing this, there's a lot of detail and you never know how much detail to present, but uh, um, we would certainly be willing to take any questions that you have, um, and uh, we can uh, try to address those. I, I, the key thing is, um, um, it is a policy decision um, that the uh, state legislature will make with regards to uh, how agricultural land will be valued, and uh, I guess uh, um, um, my uh, plea is uh, certainly uh, the department um, um, would be willing to uh, do some work to really understand um, how those things counterfactually would have worked um, in, in the past such that uh, as uh, policy is, is made, um, at, at least it will be made from uh, um, probably the best information um, we could provide to the legislature. So with that, um, there is kind of a um, silver lining there from an agricultural producer perspective. Um, that uh, those uh, tax values on uh, um, um, their appraisals will likely begin to um, turn um, in the next two or three years, and, and so there will likely be some relief. Um, may not be um, what uh, some of the uh, taxing authorities, um, the, uh, um, the uh, um, school districts or the uh, um, other um, entities that rely on tax um, property tax of agricultural land um, um, would, would like, but uh, again, that is how the uh, formula works. Um, Greg has a question, um, the calculation for the, for the determination of landlord net income. And so, Greg, the way that that's done is you would take the price of wheat in Barton County multiplied by the yield in Barton County. You would exclude any government payments. You would exclude any net uh, crop insurance proceeds, then we would end up uh, subtracting off the normal expenses that a landlord would pay. And so, for example, um, if the rent was one-third, two-third, we would take one-third of the uh, revenue, and then we would take the normal expenses that the landlord pays. And so, if they ended up paying part of the seed, if we ended up paying those, and those uh, are done by survey. And so, Essentially, what we're trying to do is just get the return from a landlord um, if they ended up using a share rental arrangement 
um, and uh, essentially we use those percentages. Does that help, Greg? Um, on irrigated, it's the same, but uh, the county level data is not um, fine enough to uh, do those on a county basis, and so those are done on a district basis. And then, essentially, um, um, the uh, pasture land is done off uh, uh, cash rent, and that's also done on a district level. Um, can you comment, and this is from Lyle, um, can you comment, on, and this one is private, so I'm going to read this one. Not everyone can see this, but can you comment on the artificial increases in landlord income created by changing the crop share percentage from 33 to 40, um, changing the crop type percentages and the crop factors so the outgoing data is not equivalent to the incoming factors? Um, this is one of the reasons why I think it make some sense to bring those in on a smaller or on a um, longer term basis if uh, the crop share changes from 33 to 40 percent. Um, the other thing I think that it is important to realize is when those changes are met on the revenue side, they're also accompanied by um, the expense adjustment. And so, for example, at a 33 percent perhaps um, the fertilizer would be paid by the tenant as opposed to the landlord. At the 40%, perhaps the uh, um, um, tenant would begin to pay in those fertilizer um, costs. And so while the revenue side is adjusted as market conditions change, and that's going to be brought in over a 15-year period, um, the um, crop insurance expenses will likely change. Um, um, and uh, um, I, again, what we're trying to do um, in the department as we calculate these LNIs is essentially to um, get the uh, typical um, rental percentage, and uh, we serve the, survey those, I think, on a four-year rotating cycle. Leah um, could uh, um, fill in the details. Um, if uh, it's it's not four years, but if I, my memory serves me right, it, it does serve on those. And, and typically what we see, Lyle, is that when we move from 33 to 40% on the revenue side, there's also a movement on the expense side um, with, with uh, that perspective. Leah does the day-to-day -day analysis, and so uh, um, she's probably much better on the nitty-gritty of the day-to-day, -day, but... Um, Hopefully that helps, Lyle. If, if not, come back. Or anybody else have questions? We're more than willing to uh, um, answer those that you may have. Um, scenario one, I think, is the interpretation. But um, again, you can also read that, that it would be just the one year, because it kind of takes out all the average. Um, two and three. Um, we had done some work um, probably in the early 1990s where yield because of the weather in Kansas and certain counties can just be up and down from year to year um, um, with, with that respect. And so the, the, the idea of uh, scenarios two and three was to try to smooth that yield such that uh, property taxes are not going to be going up and down in a county um, just because of weather related items. Um, and so that's the main reason for scenarios two and three is uh, scenario three basically shortens the time period so the adjustment is made more quickly. Scenario two basically is just saying, okay, um, let's adjust the price for market conditions, but let's try to take out um, some of that weather variability. I think in scenario one, with the interpretation that we made, I think you will see some increases and decreases in um, the um, um, property tax appraisal just due to um, weather scenarios. And um, um, maybe that's what um, the public and policymakers would prefer, um, but uh, it does make it very difficult from a um, government budgeting perspective when um, that property tax jumps up and down um, um, due to weather conditions. 
Um, Jay has a question under scenario two where you average eight year price. Is that calculation weighted for marketing um, months where more grain is marketing during the harvest months? Um, yes, the uh, price scenario that we get is the NAS um, price um, that does weight that for the marketing months. And so um, if the marketing months change drastically from one year to the next, that would um, be um, um, incorporated in that uh, um, price that we end up pulling. Um, we do end up pulling that price for the crops from um, the National Ag um, Statistical Service, and uh, they do adjust that for the marketing months. But hopefully this uh, helps to explain a little bit better um, where we are from a property tax appraisal perspective, a use value appraisal. Um, uh, again, um, um, it is a slow adjustment, and so once that thing begins to trend upwards, it stays that way for a number of years. Once it uh, begins to trend downward, it tends to stay that way um, for um, a number of years, kind of a very smooth type, type, type process. Um, um, but uh, again, other states do it differently, um, where um, you will see uh, um, property taxes increase um, much quicker, and then they'll decrease much quicker when the profitability um, um, is no longer there or is not there within the uh, agricultural sector. But um, um, the uh, process in Kansas has been a very slow um, adjustment uh, process. And I know that makes it very difficult um, for uh, producers when their incomes are falling and they see that property tax bill um, rising. Um, but um, um, again, from an appraisal perspective, that is um, what the uh, um, state legislature in, in Kansas has uh, um, determined to, to be the method. So any other questions? If not, we appreciate your interest and uh, hopefully um, we will have more webinars on various topics in the future. And uh, um, so we appreciate your time. Um, this, the uh, slides will be available on the Ag Manager Info website. Also, the recording will be available on the Ag Manager Info website. And so, um, um, it will be there for um, your um, use if uh, it is helpful in explaining a pretty complicated um, process that, uh, that Kansas, Kansas uses. So with that, um, that will end our webinar. Um, we appreciate your attendance and uh, um, we appreciate your support of the uh, Department of Agricultural Economics. Have a good 4th of July. <laughs>